Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at GDC 2014 in the Valve booth with Scott Dalton, who's been working on well this guy. Uh, this is the this is the last prototype of the Steam controller that we saw at CES or earlier this year. Yeah, this is Chell. This is actually the third prototype that we've worked on. That's at least of major revisions. Um, the one we're actually showing here at GDC is Dog, um, which is the fourth iteration. Um, we took the things we learned out of this and a lot of feedback from the not only the 300 testers but us testing internally and incorporated them into Dog, which is the latest version. So let's just run through what's changed. This looks a little bit more like a traditional controller than we're used to from, from the Steam controller. When we were looking at sort of the touchscreen and how that would fit into like how we pictured uh, the Steam controller working, as, as we went on over time, we realized there were a bunch of things about the touchscreen that we could basically incorporate straight into the touchpads themselves. Because the entire touchscreen was like essentially a large button, we'd always planned on showing what you were using your, what you had your finger on, on screen, and basically like showing that icon. And so when you clicked the uh, touchscreen button, we'd do that action. But, uh, oh, like a mouse cursor almost. Um, it, like you can imagine, we called it ghost mode, but you can imagine seeing whatever you're hovering on on here, whatever image that was, popping up on screen. So once we realized we could do that on the actual individual touch pads as well, um, a lot of the utility of having that touch, or the touch screen sort of, it, it was at least diminished. And uh, there was quite a bit of opportunity cost there with um, sort of the positioning of all the buttons and just the space on the controller. And we realized that there's a lot. There's a lot of value to having those traditional double diamonds of, of button layouts. Not only do you know people have a lot of muscle memory just associated with uh, those layouts yeah, on controllers. It, it's but, familiar. People pick it up and they know where A, B, X, and Y are. Sure, but also Nintendo people. Yeah, any games that were authored specifically for those buttons oftentimes require them to be you know relatively in the same layout just for comfort or some specific you know like quick time events for example. Right. Right. So um, it led us to to take this direction. So okay. So uh, you changed that. This, these are, of course, I think you said that these are handmade prototypes, you 3D printed. Yeah, these are all 3D printed, like we made these all sort of by hand. Like we print out our boards and like print out a lot of the shells and internal components all at Valve. So. But this is closer to the final shape yeah, of the this controller? Yeah, is, this is heading the direction that we envision it going at the moment. We're, gonna, we're still doing a lot of testing, so there may continue to be changes, but there's already been like the internal workings of this are, are almost entirely different. Uh, there's a lot of just ergonomic changes and refinements that we've made since since Chell. So I noticed a couple of big things, first off. Uh, there's batteries in here, or at least you waited. I don't know if there's batteries. There are actually batteries in there, yeah. Um, it feels a lot better in your hand. Like mm. the, 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 the CS prototype felt noticeably light, which I know is a wired sure. prototype. Yeah. Um, You've also changed the way the triggers work some, it seems like. Yeah, uh, the triggers on uh, DOG are now actually analog, which on uh, Chell we had just purely digital um, triggers. But the, one of the nice things about on uh, the DOG triggers is they actually have a mechanical switch at the end of the throw as well. So um, choosing, depending on what a game wants to do, they can both read out the full analog value and do something like that. Like if it's a racing game, you can accelerate based on the, the analog amount. But you also have that nice like tactile click when you actually engage the digital thing, which is great for if you're playing a shooter and you just really want that like pew, when, pew, I, pew. when I click this, it fires. Like there's no there's no ambiguity as to when it's actually going to engage. But you can use both if you want to. And, there's plenty of interesting use cases so, for that. So with the new buttons, it seems like there's a little more opportunity to use this with games that we use a traditional gamepad. Yeah. Um, like how does the like how do developers take advantage of that? Do they have to write to specific APIs? Can you use X input? What what's the? So um, we have a native API for the controller that you can access through Steam. If you're on Steamworks, it's really straightforward, and you can access basically all the functions of the controller. That the haptics on the track pads, uh, the states of all the buttons, and all that sort of stuff, um, and that's kind of what we hope developers will do because they obviously have the most power for specifically for doing interesting things with the haptics on the, the touchpads. Okay. Um, that said, um, through our like legacy interfaces, we can the, the controller basically shows up to a computer as a keyboard, a mouse, and a traditional like gamepad. So we can capitalize on that to use any mixture of those controls as well. So any of the legacy games that we're showing, like Broken Age or whatever, we the, the game basically recognizes it as if it's one of those existing control types. So, and developers can work off of that as well. So we haven't talked about the haptics yet. This is the, obviously the big thing. We talked about it a little bit at CES. But there's a couple of different modes. I, I, I've already tried a couple of different modes. One with a racing game, the sticks kind of mimic analog sticks on a, on a mm -hmm. traditional game pad. But when you're using native mode, like on Portal 2 here, what, what changes? If we're in ma native mode, our, our, our movement here is, is analog. We can move slowly. We can move quickly. Um, we have one to one sort of like okay where I'm where I'm moving away from the pad determines how, how quickly I'm moving, but uh, the main thing is we, we have this sort of one to one looking capability on on the pad, um, 
Whereas traditionally on like a, an analog stick, your, your deflection of the stick, how far you've moved the stick, determines the rotation rate for your character, which means that it's, it's not really one-to-one, -one, it's a relative move The closer you get to the edge, the uh, faster you go? The faster you rotate, but you're, you're not directly, like you don't move the stick 30 degrees to move 30 degrees. It starts you rotating and you'll just keep on going. Right. Whereas with this one-to-one, -one, we, we get a much more precise, really specific sort of uh, setup of, of where you want to look. It's almost like scooching a mouse and then yeah. lifting it up and moving it back and scooching it again. Right? But we also have momentum where you can see it, it oh, decelerates. Wow. So um, you can both feel, feel that on the haptics of the pad, but also you can do these quick flicks where you do like a 180 or a 360 or whatever and stop the pad at the proper point. By tapping, like, tapping back, yeah, back, by back on Yeah, by tapping back on it. The nice thing is like for a lot of people that come from a, a PC background or have used a lot of mouse look, it feels much more natural to do that. Like a lot of people coming from, from the PC space to like a console space, oftentimes they have a hard time getting used to dual stick um, because of those differences in how the 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 camera is, is oriented. Yeah, it's um, like different speaking different languages. Yeah, and so we really thought it was it was useful to provide that kind of interface for people that want to sit and play games on their couch, but maybe aren't as comfortable with analog sticks. Mm -hmm. The the nice thing is because these pads are um, they're basically a programmable surface. There we can change things to the firmware or for through software. You can also treat this right pad as an analog stick. You can in this, much the same way we're doing the the movement on the left pad. We can treat the distance you are from the center of the pad as like deflecting the stick, so you can just have the character rotate at that rate, and it, it feels very similar to playing with an analog stick. Or any combination, one can be one, one can be the other. Yeah, right? and you can kind of mix it up however you'd like. So that, it gives us a lot of freedom because it, it, depending on what you're more comfortable with as a gamer, or like what makes the ga game design more interesting, you can choose like this sort of appropriate type of control. So, so you mentioned playing games that you wouldn't traditionally play on the couch on the couch yeah. using this controller. I would love to play Civ Five on the couch, but I look at the UI for that game, and I think I'd probably need binoculars of some kind to play it. Sometimes it does help to kick down the resolution, but we're hoping that as, as future games go forward, like it will be less of like, oh, it's a legacy game that wasn't ever made for this, and more people will kind of embrace, like, I want to make this style of game. Like at, at Steam Developers Days, we had a ton of people coming up to us who work on like strategy style games especially, who were like, it, I've never been able to make my game play with a controller because it just fundamentally, the design decisions don't work on a on a, a stick, but yeah. they're very excited about having the ability to actually still have that control. So we're hoping people will make like more of a ten foot oriented interface for that style of thing, where yeah, you can now sit on a couch and you can you can still play the game as it was meant to be played, but um, you know you're using a controller Tap rather than than a, a mouse sitting at your desk, right? So the controllers you're showing here, you have hooked up as wi they're wired controllers here. Yes. But I know you eventually want to be wireless. What's the um, what, what's the technology you're using to connect? Um, so we have our own custom wireless stack. Uh, it's been developed in-house. Um, essentially, if you buy the controller by itself, it'll come with the dongle. Um, Steam machines should come with built-in, you know, connectivity, so you can just play. Um, but it'll work on Windows, Mac, Linux. Windows, Mac, SteamOS, Linux. Um, yeah, it should work across all pl platforms. And the controller can be played on anything that runs Steam. Were you a hardware guy that came to Valve to do this, or is this a? Um, I was not. I've been at Valve since um, Half-Life 2 and uh, worked on most of our projects. Um, I do a lot of our special effects and uh, level design and things like that. But I was one of the early people that was really campaigning internally for, um, I'm, a, I'm a person that has, a, has always had a home theater PC hooked up at home. Very early adopter for all of our internal big picture and SteamOS testing at home. And I've always been one of the person that was always trying to find, how do I play this game that's this awesome PC game on my couch? So you had so a lot I, of terrible wireless I was the, keyboards with touchpads. Yeah, yeah, I, I tried every random thing that I could find. Um, and I, early on, was taking like, you know, gamepad controllers and taking trackballs and wiring them all together and, and hacking now all the interfaces to make it work. Um, yeah. I'm not a not an electrical engineer or like hardcore, you know, like I'm not the guys that are actually capable of going in and doing a lot of that stuff, but I, I'm designing a lot of the other stuff. So when we were hiring uh, everybody to come in, like it, we basically were like, this is a, something we think is important and interesting to tackle. So uh, we started working on it. So what's the final end game for this? Dota? I, I would love to get Dota completely like amazing on the controller. Dota is a, a game of edge cases where every every hero, every ability, oftentimes has radically different targeting mechanisms and everything else. So it's definitely the the high bar that we see as far as like if we can make Dota happen, it'll be amazing. And, and we are working on that. But uh, our main goal has been like there's there's around 3,000 games on Steam, and most of them weren't designed with controllers in mind. So we really want people to just be able to enjoy those in a new setting. Like, be able to sit on your couch, have fun playing it, um, and not have the, the input device be the thing that stops you from actually playing the game. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, we'll have more from GDC 2014 for Test Time. Will, see you guys later.